all a bit late this morning. I slept the clock round. A sign of a clear conscience, Doctor? Or just a nightcap or two? Uncalled for, Judge. Totally uncalled for. No smell of coffee. The stove in the kitchen is cold. Where's breakfast? We were just wondering the same thing. Miss Brent isn't in her room. Has anyone else noticed the dining room is locked up tight? Rogers did that, so no more Sailor Boy figurines could be broken. Hmm. He seems to have got the cart before the horse, if you ask me. Kitchen door to the outside is locked as well. Perhaps he's chopping firewood for the stove. I confess I don't like it. Both Rogers and Miss Brent missing? Mr. Narricot, would you mind having a look around outside? Certainly. You don't mind if I tag along, I'm <clears throat> sure. Ah, where's she been? Good morning, Mr. Narricot. I'm afraid the sea is as high as ever. I doubt we'll see a boat from the mainland today. Have you been wandering about the island alone, Miss Brent? Don't you realize that is an exceedingly foolish thing to do? I'm in no danger when I'm alone, Mr. Bloor. She doesn't get it at all. I'm sticking to you, Narricot. Let's find Rogers. Nobody found that suspicious at all. Rogers? Blimey, either he's a good five feet taller or... Cut clean in half. Dead, of course. Yes, we don't need Dr. Armstrong to tell us that. Or to fix the cause of death. Axe looks cleaned off. A tidy chap like Rogers would have approved. Dining room key, I expect. He was holding it. Rogers is now in his bedroom. Chapter 5. Six little sailor boys playing with a hive. A bumblebee stung one, and then there were five. My compliments to Miss Claythorne and Mr. Bloor for breakfast. We have to eat to keep our strength up. I'm a domestic sort of man. I don't mind. Since it is now certain the killer is following the rhyme over the fireplace in the front parlor, our course is clear. Miss Brent, you have an allergy to bee stings. The next little sailor boy is meant to lose his life in the same way. We will do our utmost to protect you. I have something I'd like to say since Mr. Owen is undoubtedly here in this room keeping his strength up. The others may have done what your recording claimed, but I am not guilty of anything. Beatrice Taylor died of her own sins, not by my hand. I feel certain you now see you were in error when you invited me here to face your judgment. That's a nervy speech, if you ask me. I was just doing my job. Miss Brent, you cannot assume Owen is behaving rationally in any way. If you'd seen what he did to Rogers. Doctor, I will thank you to keep your opinions to yourself. Coming from the bottom of a bottle as they do, they are worse than useless. How dare you? I'm sure Mr. Owen and I understand one another. I'm going to collect my knitting. I'll be on the front patio if anyone needs me. I can't see anyone needing that woman, ever. If you'll excuse me, I'll just go up to my room and fresh... That is to say... I must say, Mr. Narricot, I'm disappointed. Four dead now. My confidence in you seems to have been misplaced. I may have to take more direct action. There's been a murder. Surely I should use this time to thoroughly search for clues. Hmm, but where should we start? <coughs> Can see there's one, two, three, four gone now. Uh, let's see what way can we go. Check my inventory again. We'll go to the kitchen.
Uh, it doesn't look like there's anything here. I don't know, maybe I'm just supposed to talk to everybody again. I think it'd be more blood, considering he was cut in half. Better to let the dead rest in peace. Anything here? No. Hmm. Where should I go? Where should I go? I think I'll go back out through the dining room. See if I'm just supposed to talk to everybody. everybody. Seems like everybody's just disappeared. Ah, thank god somebody's here. Can't be much fun playing alone. The doctor seems uninterested in snooker at the moment. Besides, I find the game relaxes me. I can think more clearly. I'm sorry you think I let you down. Not at all, my boy. My criticism was for Mr. Owen's benefit. I see no reason to put all of my eggs in one basket, then show the contents of that basket to him. I'm working along several lines at the moment. I'll give you a game. I'd rather continue on my own if you don't mind. Besides, you have more important things to do, I'm sure, than knock a few balls into holes. Do you have any suggestions for me? It's the first decent weather we've had since yesterday morning. I'd take advantage of that to signal the mainland or try and escape the island. I am grateful for your assistance, Judge Wargrave. Aha. So it's I take it it's stopped raining and I can go out again. In that case, let's go to the front door. You had no right to speak to me that way at breakfast. Didn't I? It's still morning and you're drunk already. Thanks to you. Doctor, as you yourself must know, blaming others for one's own faults is a favorite trick of the alcoholic. You cloak yourself in religion, but you're the most unchristian woman I've ever met. You're a devil. A devil, do you hear me? I'm certain everyone can hear you, Doctor. Eavesdropping is impolite, Mr. Narricott, but under the circumstances, I'm glad you overheard. Let's go talk to her. Enjoying the break in the weather, Miss Brent. This island has only <coughs> two types of weather, gloomy and slightly less gloomy. I am taking advantage of this brief, slightly less respite. You were pretty hard on Dr. Armstrong. No more than he deserved. I only wonder that he didn't kill more people operating drunk than that one woman Owen mentioned. Cleese, was it? Armstrong was trying to help you at breakfast. I do not require his help, or yours. The Lord is mindful of his own. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror at night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day. You are the next logical victim, Miss Brett. I disagree. Owen's bee sting might be many things. One of my knitting needles, perhaps. Even a hypodermic needle. I suspect the doctor has one of those in his medical bag. Besides, I'm confident that the angel of death will pass me over. Anything else that might be important? I can't vouch for its importance, but something rather annoying has happened. What? Someone has taken my grey wool. All of it. I won't be able to finish this shawl without it. Good day, Miss Brent. Oh my god, not being able to finish her grey shawl? How is the parachute coming along? It's done, Mr. Narricott. I won't take up any more of your time, Miss Brent. Oh, thank God. 
finally. Let's just put all our things together. Excellent, like hand in glove. Oh, looks quite nice. Maybe we'll uh, we'll give that a go now. I'm guessing I gotta do it off the top of that cliff. moods are as changeable as the weather. You keep away from her. Relax, old boy. For some reason, the lady seems to prefer you. I seem to have underestimated you. I wonder if Owen has too. First, let's talk to Vera. Are you okay, Vera? Yes. I'm... Um... Fine. I just don't know who to trust. Oh, which one should we say? Now, let's see the second you one. You shouldn't trust anyone. Oh, Patrick. Oh, okay. So, how do I use this parachute? Aha. I can't say I'm ecstatic about this enterprise, but here goes nothing. I didn't even come close to the mainland. Lucky that buoy was out there or I'd have drifted out to sea. There was a metal box affixed to it, quite recently from all appearances. It looked like some sort of homing beacon. Oh, there it is, the German naval homing beacon. Can I dismantle it? I can't take that apart. Can't, I have no idea what the hell I'm supposed to do with that. German naval homing beacon. 